All right, guys, I got to back up my camera all the way for this because the box is so big, it ain't going to fit on the friggin' table. This is the Vortex Venom 5 to 25 by 56 featuring the EBR 7C M Red for focal plane reticle. I've been wanting to get my hands on this since Vortex first brought these to market about a year or so ago. I was confident that this would be better than the Strike Eagle 5 to 25. How do I know? How do I know how that would perform? Well, a good friend of mine has one. I haven't reviewed it yet because he has it on his main rifle and I just honestly haven't had the time. So I bet that video would do really well. That was one of the main reasons why I bought this when I did when I found it on sale for about 400 ish bucks. Because for the $500 price tag this thing comes with regularly, it's still fairly competitive in the grand scheme of things if it can perform as well as it should for the price point. So anything less than that is just gravy. With all that being said though, this does have some sort of potential of being a very budget-minded, very high-performing first focal plane HPVO. What is an HPVO? A high-powered variable optic, which coincidentally is a 5 to 25 or so. The box is typical Vortex. It's actually really, really nice for their lower mid-tier optics. All your information is going to be there and on the side over here. Yeah, it's a really big box. I don't have a whole lot of room on this table, but don't worry, I'll be getting a new table soon. Let's crack this thing open and see what our money will buy you. Oh, let me move some stuff over. It buys you really nice illustrations inside. Clearly, Vortex is trying to say this is going to be pretty tough because they have this on some steel diamond plate that is rusted over with what looks like 6.5 Creedmoor next to it. Now, the box itself is beautiful. The presentation is beautiful. It's in here fairly well. Backside of the foam has our sunshade, which very rarely used, but if you need it, you got it. And then pulling the optic out gives us a nice little view of what we can expect. Weight-wise already, it doesn't feel too, too bad. Cleaning cloth, stickers, instruction manuals, and a little Allen key, which we're going to be needing momentarily, because we are going to pull the turrets off this thing. Now, before I move the box out of the way, let's go over the reticle booklet. The EBR7C reticle is really nice. It's got a nice center dot, really good looking holds. Their booklets as well from Vortex give you a lot of information. So if you're curious about how to really use a reticle like this to a higher potential than potential than what you might already possess, give this book your first look because it'll give you a good amount of information on where to start. As far as the optic book itself, there really isn't that much going on because this doesn't have illumination. And that's a fairly complicated sort of mechanism to have inside one of these things. So for the price point, I'm hoping that they will give us better glass and or better turrets for our money. The bikini cap is a Vortex branded bikini cap. These are really nice. And with that, let's get this box out of the way. Now, one last thing to talk about is inside the sunshade, we have two very big components to this thing. Our zero stop, a tool for our turrets and an included throw lever, which is slicker than snot. I will be installing this very soon, but for right now, this is what you should be receiving in one of these boxes. So for the 500-ish or lower price point, you get a fair bit amount of stuff. Now, before I get involved in any of that, let's take a look at the back and work our way forward. Actually, you know what? First and foremost, let's talk about weight, because this thing, like I've said, is fairly slim for what it is. 34 millimeter tube, 56 millimeter front objective, five to 25 coming in at about 35 and three quarter ounces. Let's call it 36 just to keep our mind sort of the same. Now this is not the same magnification range, but the Arkin four to 16 SH four is heavier and the six to 24 is even heavier still. So the Arkin is already heavier. The Arkin does however, include illumination, but it's so dim. It doesn't even seem like it makes any much sense. Now we can also go with its really big brother, the four and a half to 27 Razor Gen 2, and you'll see it's, it's 15 ounces heavier. So this thing, for what it is, let me not drop everything off my shelf, this thing is fairly lightweight for what it is. Now, this, it is true, there is no illumination on this thing, but is that the end of the world? I don't think so. 
Anyway, starting at the back, we have a fast focus eyepiece, which comes out very, very smooth, quarter turn in. A little bit of wiggle up and down, it must be said, but side to side, it is very tight. There's nothing. No weird noises or sounds, except for when we bottom it out. Perfectly fine, in my opinion. Magnification is 5 to 25, and as you can see, we're actually a little bit less than 180 degrees, which is pretty damn cool. I mean, it's not much, it's probably only about 5 degrees or so, but typically, most magnified optics are going to be about 180 degrees. Now, if we do not have the throw lever on this, it is fantastic as far as the splines that they gave us here. No rounded edges. I mean, it's round. It's not going to, you're not going to cut yourself on this, but you can pinch and twist and get really, really good purchase on this. This is fantastic. This is among the better sort of magnification rings I've ever got my hands on that doesn't have a throw lever on it. But guess what? We do have a throw lever. And it's included. So this right here, if you wanted to buy the Vortex branded throw lever, will cost you 30-ish plus dollars, depending on which one you go with. This is nice, low profile. It is smooth on the inside. So when we mount this up, we got to get it probably all the way to the back and then lock it up. Now using the included Allen key, I'm going to loosen this up not all the way but enough we should have a little bit of an opening about an eighth of an inch and let's see if that'll be enough to slide this over without destroying everything slide this over and on like so we're gonna go all the way to the back because that's the fattest part and we're going to just snug this screw up a little bit that's a very very small thread in there last thing i want to do is strip it but guess what if you stripped it vortex would replace it you can see there's a small gap in there still and with the throw lever it is a non-issue uh that screw like i said is extremely small way too small in my opinion i'd like to see that be uh, twice the size but i guess they'd rather you strip out the, the throw lever than damage the magnification ring and squeeze it and then throw this out of whack and now you gotta replace the scope as opposed to a throw lever. So there's always a give and take for everything, but fantastic magnification ring. On to the side, we have no illumination, so there is no battery compartment, but we do have a side focus that goes all the way down to 15 yards and out to infinity. We have a very, very finite adjustment up to about 100 yards, as you can see, it's about 270 degrees before we go from 100 to infinity. Now, I myself shoot a lot of shooting inside of 50 yards, but you might need this to go down to 15 yards. Let's say you're shooting air rifles or something like that. You have a super amount of finite ability here if you were to shoot inside of 50 yards. Now, we're gonna test this out, but at higher magnifications at farther distance, is this going to be enough adjustment to be able to give us a perfect image each and every time. There's only one way to find out. Now, as you can see, clearly see, this is almost 360 degrees, but this ring is incredibly well damped, very smooth, and listen. Silent. It's also got the exact same splineage that's going on that we saw with, I should have mentioned it earlier, both the fast focus eyepiece, the magnification ring, and now the side focus. Absolutely fantastic. As you can clearly see, we have 10 mils per rotation, which is my ultimate preference. Because guess what? You're probably not gonna be going much past 10 in most cases anyway. And if you do, you can do one full turn and know that you're at 10 and it's easy to go 11, 12, 13, as opposed like with the Arkin, I think the Arkin's eight. Yeah, the Arkin is eight mils per rotation. Um, the Swamp Fox is like six or seven. A couple of them are real oddball numbers. Vortex kept it nice and simple here. 10 mils per rotation is fantastic. These are not locking, but they do have the zero stop adjustment, which we will be looking at shortly after we give these things a nice little twist. Little bit of play. But, fantastic sound, 
fantastic feel. And again, we have the same splinage going up on here on top. And look at that little attention to detail. The spline over zero, they cut through, so you know where zero is, even by feel. You could run your finger across the bottom of this, and it'll actually catch right there, in case you couldn't see that. Is that attention to detail or just a design element that they liked? I can't really say for sure, but I like that. Will I ever need to, you know, okay, there's my zero. Probably not, but you know what? It's something that you could use if you wanted to. They feel and sound very, very good. Now, I would need this to be side by side with a Strike Eagle to know which one's better, but I'm going to say that this takes the cake so far. Come on, throw lever. Now you're in my way. Onto the windage. You can clearly see we have left and right indicated with one all the way out to five total mils of adjustment from zero. It's exact same 10 mil setup that we saw on our elevation control, but we know, again, if you're going right or left. As far as the feel, still a touch of play once it's in the detent, but once you're there, it lines up extremely well. You can count it very easily by sound or by feel. And again, we see that the top spline is cut all the way through at zero. So far, these are fantastic. All right, so as far as installing this zero stop function, it's extremely easy, almost idiot proof. We're gonna remove the, the turret. We're going to put on the ring, index it, put back on the turret, and as you'll see, we'll be done. How does that look? Well, it looks something like this. We need our little ring. We need our tool that is included to remove the turret top, which is really, really nice. You don't have to worry about marring it up. You get a lot of leverage. It's way better than a coin, but we could still use a coin if we need to. So anyway, um, let's say we're about there. Three, mil, three mils is about where I was up earlier. So let's say that's gonna be my new zero. We're gonna squeeze this. We're going to remove the top part of the turret, which feels really, really good. Threads on there feel good and with the amount of resistance that I feel, there's definitely an O-ring inside there somewhere. Hold on. Almost there. There we go. Let's take a look at it. So the threads are clearly in the middle. Kind of hard to see. But we have a big old fat O-ring on the outside, which is excellent. Put that off to the side. And it's literally this simple. We're going to remove the turret without rotating it. Take the ring, as you can clearly see which way it's supposed to go. Put it on and you're going to rotate until it stops that's it there's a pin over here as you can see Ooh, a little oh it's grease yeah it's grease so there's a pin over here we're going to put it on and rotate it until it stops then we're going to take our turret and you can see there's a pin right there where my thumb is we're going to now line this up to zero and then we would install the top back on and that would be it so what that's going to allow us to do is climb but then, once we get to zero, stop. There you go. It's as simple as that. Jesus Christ. And there you have it. It's really, really simple. And so far, it seems really, really good for the price, especially sub $500. But how does this thing look to actually get behind? That's the big question. First things first, ladies and gentlemen, when I'm talking about how good something feels and how it looks and how it operates, it's always in regards to its price point. At $500, this thing is very, very good. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that something like $2,000 is going to be four times as good. There is definitely a delta between them sometimes, but for right now, everything about this optic at $500 is exceptional. If you get this thing on sale, used, refurbished, and it's even less, only means that it's going to be even better. The reticle on this thing is fantastic. I've said it before and I'll say it again, it's one of my favorite reticles, bar none. Very easy to pick up, the center dot is perfect, all the holds are very legible and easy to read. It is sensational. As far as the glass that we see, 
Again, we have an excellent image here at 30 yards. The side focus really is fantastic and inside of 100 yards gives us a lot of play. What happens if we push past 100 yards here to about 400 yards? Very clearly, this is a very bright sunny day, so it should give us the absolute pinnacle as far as optical clarity overall. And the image here at 5x speaks completely for itself. It is very clear, bright, and sharp. I think I prefer how this looks at 5x as opposed to the Razer HD Gen 2 4.5 to 27 at 4.5. Unfortunately, though, not everything could be perfect. And here in the middle range of the magnification, you can see that we have a bit of scope shadow going on. Fortunately, however, it's such a minute little shift that when you're behind this thing, you won't even notice it. And here at 25X, we are greeted with a very good looking image. Again, that side focus is very easy and fine to adjust, and it just works perfectly. And with that, that's going to conclude this unboxing. Thank you all very much for watching. And as always, see you again next time. And a huge thank you to my Patreon providers and my Subscribestar subscribers. Without you, this truly wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to support my channel but don't want to join either of those, I completely understand. But you can still help by using my affiliate links in the description below, and or like, share, and subscribe as always. Again, thank you very much.